future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. And greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome to another fabulous in- episode of Dr. Judy WTF. I am your host, Walt Lusk. And, of course, we have Dr. Judy Rosenberg in studio today. We are finishing up, we're darn close, to finishing our series of the nine panels of the mind map that Dr. Judy's f- fabulously uh, invented and uh, created about 12 years ago. And, as usual, we're going to have two great classic songs that we're going to shrink uh, on shrink that tune later so stay tuned on that one and uh, we're going to do a quick overview of where we are in our mind map to make sure we're not lost and bewildered and uh, then dive into the eighth panel of the nine panel mind map so and this is also don't forget this is a call-in show so if you want to call in we always say don't explode or implode but unload and get on the couch of dr judy the number is area code 323-843-2826 and you can check us out at www.info well you can email us at info at drjudy.wtf.com or you can check us out at www.drjudy.wtf.com so uh, what's new doctor well first of all it is a call-in show and we love call-ins because after all this is for you to really express and unload and for me to have the opportunity to analyze and uh, for those of you who are listening for the first time you may have noticed the theme of our uh, show song which is well i'm a big movie buff so it's actually uh, from the original first movie of the matrix series it's titled club to death and club to death is very appropriate because we talk a lot uh, during our discussions about the hole in the soul which comes from mother infant disconnect and the uh, injuries and the wounds of childhood so club to death I think is very appropriate and plus the fact that the mind map is a matrix which is a a series of informational panels that interconnect and actually reveal a process which I call a from through to process from the problem and its creation through the dismantling of the problem or how it dismantles you and to the parish paradigm shift into solution so with the theme of the matrix and the theme of the mind map which is a matrix of information that we're going to be presenting I think that we've got a match here in terms of our our, our theme song don't you think so it works for me yeah it was kind of s- semi subliminal I was actually trying to find a, a tune f- when we first started the show almost a year ago <laughs> it's absolutely mm-hmm. amazing mm-hmm. Um, and came up with it and uh, more hurt Judy figured out what the song was from what it was about it was pretty amazing and it was coincidental <laughs> as opposed to coincidental So just a little bit about why we call the show Dr. Judy WTF. Well, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, so obviously that's the doctor part. Yes, she's actually a real doctor. A real doctor, although some some MDs would say, you're not a real doctor. real doctor is an MD. Oh, but you know what MD stands for, doctor? MD actually stands for medical deity. Medical deity. Medical I like deity. that. And yeah, your well father, I know your father, my father was a doctor. Was a, my father was a physician, and, and in many respects, I actually grew up around a, lo- a, a plethora of physicians. I won't say doctors, although I was married to a psychologist, another doctor for quite a while. Um, yeah, and I learned that you know they, they are, have a bit of deity in them, so if, if your doctor's kind of giving you grief and, and is dead and firm, it's simply because he's really an MD, medical deity so look if i pull any deity here then just you know go ahead knock me off the pedestal i'm sure that uh, well actually there have been <laughs> your own definition of phd actually works very very well from the from your psychological center it's peaceful healing dialogue and we're going to talk about that yes, this we, evening yes, because it is a bridge to uh actually healing and keeping the connection going and there's a way to dialogue so that you don't blow up the bridge of communication. So yes, that's an integral part of what I do with my patients and what we're gonna do tonight. 
and uh, the WTF part actually st stands for what the Freud and Freud is uh, famous uh, and his contribution of the repetition principle which is a um, something that we do unconsciously we repeat things because the bottom line of the repeat is that we want to heal through so we're not just idiots repeating and running through the maze we're hoping to have a better ending to the story now is, is repeating things different than looping it's it's a loop yeah it's a loop but it's a loop with a purpose Kay. so it's a little bit different in, in that there's an unconscious desire to complete that file to complete the pain and complete the um, the symptoms that really uh, revolve around the original wound, which is the disconnect. So uh, when I talk about what the Freud and the re repetition principle, I'm really talking about patterns that I see come into my office and patterns that you yourself might rec recognize in your life. And one common pattern, of course, is entering into the similar pattern relationships. People break up with each other, for example, and then they find themselves in a relationship with a similar kind of person. Deja vu. Or maybe an opposite, which is also another kind of similar because it's a reaction formation against that other person that they now thought was the bad person, and now they pick up the other side of the coin, which is supposed to be the good person, never really bothering to heal the wounds within so that they're, magnet they're magnetized uh, new injuries into their life and that's how it works folks is that if you don't heal then uh, your, your your blueprint is um, is injured and then you draw in uh, other people who just click and fit right into the uh, the Lego well, pieces I, I would say of draw, that bl I wouldn't blueprint. say you draw in I'd say you attract one attracts okay attracts right draw in is more of a positive yeah yes? well, yeah right? I think it uh, sort of the attracts would be a better fit at least from what I know. So, so the what the Freud principle is really about um, wanting to heal an injury that's been looping around or repeating or however you want to put it and uh, we want an end to this. So we're going to track that uh, in today's show and we're going to really summarize everything that's gone on because for, for those of you ha who have never listened to the show I want to summarize a little bit so that you could be on the same mind map with us and I don't want to lose anybody okay so yeah we get we get really complicated and deep here yeah very complicated and we're going to get deeper I understand that the audience wants to those have big fans and thanks for being a fan of the show and and of course our audience is growing thank mm -hmm. you yeah, and, 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 it, and it is a fact. I think that people today want transformative information. They want information that's actually going to paradigm shift them out of the old paradigm that they live in, a paradigm of pain to a paradigm of beauty and interconnection and wholeness and unity. And we're going to talk a lot about that and tonight. And the last two previous shows were actually about panel seven, which is the paradigm shift. So if you want right. to know a little more about that, uh, listen to those two shows. Right, and to review what's been going on for the past many um, episodes, uh, what, we, what we're tracking now is a, a system of thinking. And the system of thinking has to do with going to cause. So whenever we have a problem, whenever we have a symptom, whenever we have a presenting problem or something that pains us in life, then we, we have to understand that this didn't just come from the air. There is a cause to, uh, to that pain or that symptom. So when we look to the cause, and, and Walt, do you have that mind map up there? I do. For those of you that are listening to this on a podcast, which you can pull it from iTunes as well as Stitcher. Uh, Stitcher is a great app as well on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. You just pu punch in actually Dr. Judy and it'll pop up on Stitcher pretty fast. We go to www.drjudywtf.com, but uh, there's, a, there's a shot of the mind map for those of you seeing this live. Yeah, thanks for having it up there because this is a metaphor for the flow of life. And uh, if you stare at panel one, there's a lot of significance there. Panel one is really the first disconnect. If you can look at it and see the darkness within the light, the dark background, which is the proverbial blank slate, it's our potential, and then the light is our, 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 our soul essence wanting to shine through, and uh, on a more deeply spiritual level, it's about source, the light, 
God, whatever you want to call it, universal truth. I like to call it truth just because um, I'm very interested in universal truth from the perspective of um, resonance and synergy. And we talked about synergy last time. Yes, and we then, did. you know, when there is a, a spoken universal truth, then it all comes together in some kind of synergistic way in the sense that people can recognize it and it resonates, and that's what I mean by universal. It's, it's, it's cross-cultural. Well, the one thing that is really interesting, if you stop and think just for a moment about darkness, there's really only one thing that can get through and cut through that darkness, and that is light. It doesn't matter if it starts as a candle, mm -hmm. but it, there has to be light. And the ultimate light is, uh, or universal truth is, unconditional love. And if we're to talk about it from that perspective, Walt, then um, what we're talking about is that the first wound has to do with lack of unconditional mm -hmm. love, which mm -hmm. is the darkness. And so what it takes to form a healthy human psyche, a healthy human being, is a bunch of emotional ingredients. And these ingredients are eye contact, skin contact, uh, breastfeeding, uh, uh, the, the rhythm of the heart, attunement, meaning that mother puts baby before herself and she is able to soothe and she's able to really understand the cues that he, the baby's giving off in terms of need for uh, being fed or being changed or being too hot or too cold or whatever it, that need is. As my father is. used to call that the maternal instinct. Right, yeah. and some fathers have it too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and by the way, when I say mother, infant, I mean primary caregiver. So, if you're a father and you're the primary caregiver, I'm referring to you. And if you are grandmother or an adoptive parent, I'm referring to you. So, there's always a primary caregiver, and then there's a secondary caregiver. And good mental health means that we bond to the primary caregiver because this is what we need to do. We need to healthily attach so that we can become strong and we can soak in the, the love, the nurturance, the information. We can sponge it in so that we can grow. So as, as this is happening and as disconnects are happening, what happens is that this perception of self, the self which is the whole self, it becomes shattered. And if you look at panel two, you'll see this kind of a shattering, and it's a metaphor for a shattered perception of life itself, a shattered perception of the self, and it really represents the reaction to the wound. And then this kind of turns gangrean over time and encodes into the fiber of the person's being. So the first primitive reaction is the anxiety from not being held or attuned to, or it's the, it's the, 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 the holding in and the cutting off when the mother absolutely ignores the baby and the baby goes into kind of like a hopeless, helpless state. And then by panel three, you can see the DNA strand, which is an encoding into the fiber of the person's being, and that's where those horrible, negative core beliefs li live. Core beliefs like, I'm not good enough, I'm worthless, uh, I'm powerless, and on and on and on and on. And what's interesting on. is, that's when it's encoded and it becomes part of us, and as we like to say in the show, as a Judaism, is childhood is a hostage situation. And so therefore, this encoding isn't our fault. We, we, we are, uh, I hate to use the words, pop my head is victim, but we, we've been trained and, 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 and uh, taught this. And the point is, down the road, it's part of us, and many times we try to defend the wound. In fact, it, the, the, we should not. We should identify it and, and kind of exercise it and, and get the virus out, which is what the mind map is so, so beautifully uh, able to do. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I, when I first started working with the mind map, it was actually a macro project designed to heal global disconnect, and then I decided to pare it down to healing human disconnect. Well, if you know that way, I can experiment and use it with my patients and see con concrete results. Well, it, it, the byline of the show is healing human disconnect, and if if we are healing one individual at a time, eventually we're going to have a bunch which therefore could strip, uh, we talked about the butterfly effect, mm -hmm. right, the ripple effect, mm -hmm. will then help to heal 
globally, and it does start in, on an individual basis. I, I, th I think so. So it's yeah, an absolutely. inside job, and Definitely I think that when job. we have health within, then we're going to be able to share that with others and rebalance and the state of the emotional um, state of affairs of the world. Uh, so, so you can see the progression now. So there's the injury, the disconnect, and then there's the reaction, and then there's an encoding to it. And this encoding gets tripped up by life itself. So somebody comes along and makes the person feel worthless or stupid and powerless. And then, bang, they're in panel number four. They're in chaos because they can't handle those feelings because they have no ability to self-soothe. Remember, mom didn't do the job. So now... The person can't internally do it for themselves, and now they're in chaos, and now there's a, a sense of um, confusion and emotional confusion, and so in defense of this chaos, they start using some defense mechanisms, and we've talked about some common ones like alcoholism or overeating or isolationism. There are lots of isms. And, and smoking. Or smoking, yep. right, or yep. shopping, or mm -hmm. porn, or just about anything that takes your mind off of the pain yep. and, and coats tries your... tries to fill in that hole in the soul. Right, from the original wound mm. itself. So you can see how this is a domino effect, and that's why I like to use the mind map because I can help my patients track the entire system, and then we can go back over it, and they can clean out the the entire emotional system and reboot. The success that Judy, Dr. Judy's had in this system, um, she calls me on a weekly basis. I had a patient that had this, that, and the other, and you know, two months later, um, you know, they're, they're markedly improved. Um, not that this is a cure-all, uh, although the, if it's done properly, the, you know, the, the healing is, is, is true and permanent. But it's been very, very successful in, in helping a lot of people with a lot of challenges. No, I really appreciate you saying that, Walt. And, and I think that the reason that's so is because I'm not dealing with the symptoms. I'm not dealing with managing them or, or medicating them or putting a bandage yeah. on them. I, I learned that the new correct word is bandage. Bandage. And then the uh, the generic. Uh, the, the commercial word word is band-aid. I learned something new the other day. Anyway, thought okay. I'd share that. So anyway, when we try to code it over and we don't really go to the cause of the problem and the pain that it creates and really deal directly with that, which has been taboo for so long because it's not nice to talk about how our parents injured us. It's not nice to express how we really feel. Now, just to be clear, I'm not talking about blaming and shaming and criticizing your parent because the blame and the shame and the criticism is just another way to not heal. Instead, there's another mechanism that we use in the system, and I'll get into it later with the peaceful healing dialogue. Yeah, so just make tuned. a note on that subject and understand that, yeah, stay tuned soon. Stay tuned. <laughs> this show. And, so. and again, if you want to call us, you can. We're kind of diving into this pretty uh, pretty heavy today, but our number is area code 323-843-2826. And we welcome any calls to get on the couch with Dr. Judy. So now we're in panel five. Any of you out there in panel five, meaning that you're sitting in your ism, you're using defense mechanisms to defend against the wound, and, and in this particular state, you can see that the original wound has now gotten so infected that it's turned into a tumor, and that's why panel five is represented metaphorically by these bubbles. Yeah, well, then there's the infamous uh, from uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger from Kindergarten, Kindergarten Cop. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's well, it is a tumor. It's a psychological tumor. And the tumor has to ha be really exorcised and has to be opened up. And uh, that's part of the process. It sounds nasty, doesn't it? And uh, Well, I, I, I have a personal saying, and, and it's uh, I've developed. I, I guess I hung around too many do medical deity doctors. Mm -hmm. is no surgery is painless. Well, the other yeah. option is that if you cook in your in your stew, squat stew, stew, stew in your squat your, yeah, right yeah. and you stew in your ism then that's going to eat you from the inside and, out and that's so the inference is if you need to have that's surgery, not painless no matter what kind of surgery it is it's better to have it done sooner than later 
Right. And my method is taking the bandage off quickly rather than yes, letting the person so. just doing it. And um, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of talk, talk, talk therapy. And I'm just not a fan because I don't really think that it's curative. It's not healing. Although patients experience a sense of relief. But I can't tell you, Walt, how many people come to my uh, practice and say, you know, my last therapist spent the last two years asking me, and how does that make you feel? And nodding her head and then saying, check, please. <laughs> okay, so this is something that I, I, I do want to address. And, and for those of you who are professionals, it's really important to be empathic, of course. It really is important to, to tune into your patients and to listen. But by all means, that's not where the therapy uh, stops. There's got to be a treatment plan. And the mind map is a treatment is, plan. Is a road map. And yes. I mean, you're, you're telling me almost on a weekly basis, hey, another patient graduated. Right. Meaning, you know, they've gone through the nine steps of the mind map and have identified the cause, identified the wound and, and addressed it and um, have had a paradigm shift, which we talked about last two shows mm -hmm. and they are well on their way of of being healed and uh, having that uh, virus whatever that challenge was removed for good and one of the big biggest compliments i got this week was from one of our fans who said that this is a paradigm shifting system and it follows yeah, it uh, the scientific method because there's got to be a system and then there's got to be proof behind it and it has to be replicable and so I'm currently training uh, an intern and we'll be training more interns into the system and pretty soon I'm gonna have all 10 series up for professionals to watch via a Podbeam podcast and I'll let you know when those are done I'm done with three of them now oh, cool so and you the first uh, the from part yeah the, awesome. fun, the fun part so going back the to from a part the from part so the from through to almost done with that so now we're going through and the through is the most difficult part of the therapy yes. because um, there's a lot of healing that happens when people understand how the wound happened because they they're able to connect the dots and once you're able to connect the dots and understand the the propensity is to calm down it's not such a big mystery anymore so just the information itself helps also, what helps a great deal is knowing that it's not your fault. You were not the no, cause no. of part one of your Absolutely life. Not. You didn't make yourself. You didn't. Um, you 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 didn't I I inject into the fiber of your being the information that was put in there. You did not store the computer, uh, uh, the, the 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 psychological virus into your system. A simple, quick example might be when you were younger. And maybe you were driving in the car and you wanted to stop at some place to get some ice cream. And your father just yells, what do you think we are, Rockefellers? What do you think, money grows on trees? Well, if you hear those little cliché phrases mm -hmm. more than a few times, all of a sudden you end up with a, an idea of what money is and what money isn't. Right. And you're basically being encoded by your parents believing that money doesn't grow on trees versus believing that there is absolutely abundance of money and abundance of prosperity and either you have a consciousness of lack or a consciousness of abundance and unfortunately we're all misprogrammed in some way shape or form in different aspects but that's just a real simple example just to give people an idea of you know how we get encoded and and, and need to kind of take a step back and realize hey maybe that's not true and that's a great example because once we're encoded we we live our lives through that encoding yes. that's and our blueprint and we see that through through those glasses and and um, they might be cracked and so we need to give you a new prescription so once this formation of the defense mechanism kind of cooks us in our own squat and sort of poisons us if you will and and um, it, it doesn't really defend because ultimately unhealthy defense me mechanisms eat us alive Okay, alcoholism yes. and um, being a shopaholic will eat your finances like no other. Being gambling, a gambling, gambling will toast it in a right, heartbeat. Right. 
Okay, so that's not going to work. So ultimately, what happens uh, at the end of that road is an implosion, which is a turning inward of anger, and that often will result in, well, the end game of that is, as you know, we've talked about it. And in that show, we used the example of um, er uh, Elliot Roger, who was a student at, in, in Santa Barbara, and had his rampage, and he had actually had an explosion. And then, of course, he killed himself as an implosion. Right. So that's the that's the ultimate yeah. homicide, suicide. homicide, suicide. Right. So that defense mechanism broke down very radically and yes. very quickly, and that was the end result of that. So, yes. at With the end of, of that, at the end of that showdown, right? Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's another kind of implosion and explosion, which is a therapeutic confrontation okay and in panel six and I often find myself in panel six I'm confronting the lie that gets encoded into the fiber of the person's being and through that confrontation that confrontation actually creates light so keep in mind that each panel has its positives and negatives it's yin and it's yang it's cursed by design moments and it's very delicious and very elevating moments and so as we travel through the mind map then the shift the paradigm shift is that when we are able to really take out the poison and reprocess all of this and and express our truth to who who done it who wounded us and really express it as an exercise in cleaning out the uh, the repressed emotions. No more than that. It's not an exercise in throwing mommy under the, the bus or daddy under the bus. This is a an exercise sheerly designed to really express the pain and the injury behind all of our, our symptoms, all of our isms. And the it's cause. a cleansing. It's a cleansing. Yeah. So now we've got we've gotten to panel number seven, which is the interconnection. And folks, just want to let you know you are listening to Dr. Judy WTF, and I'm your host Walt Lusk, and we uh, have in studio, as we do every time, Dr. Judy Rosenberg, who actually has a really full time practice in the Los Angeles area, in the Sherman Oaks area, and um, she's available for consults not only in person but through uh, phone consults. So even if you hear her voice anywhere in the United States. You can actually set up a consult and and uh, do the process. You don't have to be here. It's helpful, but not totally required. So just and food we, for thought in that regard. And we take care of everybody at the Psychological Absolutely Healing do. Center, yeah. which is the name of the healing center. And we're working on on doing Skype, so we have a little bit more more connection because the byline of the show, of course, is Healing Human Disconnect. And right. We've, we've found that um, we as individuals are more disconnected as a family, as a couple, uh, in our jobs, as a country, and of course, as a world. Right. So we're reaching out via Skype and also for people who are, um, are, are financially challenged. We have an intern who uh, works on a sliding scale basis and uh, a life coach who also works on a sliding scale basis. So we'll, we'll take care of you. We will not disconnect from you. Absolutely not. So once we move from the paradigm of, 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 of darkness and blockage and poison past and emotional injuries and we clean all that out, we now have the ability to interconnect, meaning that we have more wholeness. We have more to share with another human being. So if you look at panel number seven, what you will see is a bunch of orbs coming together. And, there's, and there's some light in it as well. Right, which can represent the, the new self, the new healed ism, the healthy humanistic ism, and, and then the different parts of the mind, body, soul that are now healthy enough to come together with other individuals. One of my aha moments for the, the mind map is if you just simply look at panel one and you have this sort of light coming, it's kind of enveloped into the darkness, and then going through the whole process of the mind map and it ended up in panel seven, you, you've got more light and, and, and more vibrant um, cells or whatever that's in there. Right. So in other words, it's, not, it's not murky, it's not covered up, and it's not in darkness, even though there is some darkness, but there's a lot more light and a lot 
more clarity. And a lot more flow because we're yes. enervated now. We're not blocked. Have you ever sat with your legs crossed and you get up and you, you, know, you can't feel anything? Well, sometimes traumas do that to us. They block us up and then we become shut down and we become unfeeling or we become the opposite. We become angry and act out and so on. So uh, once we start clearing the blockages, there's just more flow Absolutely. available and more Absolutely. light and yes. more life force. So now that we've- More freedom. And, and, and freedom and mm. clarity, right? Clari I talk about- I clarity um, is king. Right, I talk about the, 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 the big eye and the little eye and the big eye. If you look at panel one, it looks like a kind of like an occluded eye to me. It just, mm -hmm. just yeah, stands it out that way. That's just all foggy and clear. And that represents the compromised self, which I call the little eye, the little me. And then the big eye, which is the clearer self esteemed piece of us, the whole the wholeness of us is now represented in panel number seven as a, a whole entity that is, is, is healthy enough to connect. And so from that place, we're going to now go into panel number eight. I know that was a long journey to panel eight, but here we are in panel eight, and, and panel eight is all about encoding. The recoding. The, in, in recoding. The encoding. recoding. Yeah. Recoding. First, we encoded with a bunch of lies, and we took those lies down, and uh, we fell into chaos just because whenever there is an old system that's got to go. Remember when the communistic system went down, right? And people freaked because they Tear didn't know how to... down this wall, in the infamous words of President Ronald Reagan, and all his advisors told him, do not even think about going there. And, of course, he did, and the rest, they say, is history. And there was Tear a lot of chaos, chaos wasn't yes, there? Yes, there was a lot of chaos. And then now rebuilding. So mm -hmm. now you can see that when you tear down something, even though it's dysfunctional uh, and may not work for everybody, the tearing down itself is also very, very painful. And then what, what ends up happening in this horrible interim of through, going through the process, is it's, uh, it, it's, it's traumatic, but in a way of cleansing. Um, just as a way of entree, I'd like to, if I can, read a couple of uh, paragraphs of Judy's book that she's frantically working on, Healing Human Disconnect. And uh, this is, of course, panel eight, Healing and Recoding. It's your duty, your human, re human responsibility, especially now that your slate is clean of the infiltrations of the past, to help give back to the rest of the world by sharing your own healing light. As the great Indian, uh, great Indian guru, author of the autobiography of Yogi stated, quote, life is chiefly service. But before you're able to truly give back the full essence of your heart's gifts, you must recode yourself. Your cancer is beyond remission. It's gone. The poison has been drained. The fissures are removed and in, and in their inf of their infection, sewn up, and are now scarring over. You're now the ideal position to recode yourself with a more accurate, life-affirming, and positive core belief. This recoding will also help you pass along a healthy psychological blueprint to the next generation. Right, and that's where that multi-generational thing comes in because this is kind of like a healing within and then a healing backward because when done right, you can actually heal your parents because then yes. they become responsible yes. for their piece in it and then they then they start cleaning that piece and it's a healing of self it's a healing backwards and it's a healing forwards yeah, backwards and forwards and so the latter of panel 8 represents that the healing backwards cuz it's up and down and then there's a healing of the self mm -hmm. and then it the, the people of the DNA are immersed in water which is pH 7 which is a neutrality there's no longer a lot of toxic right. uh, waste around it's, it's nice and neutralized as we are once we clean out and and then there's an opportunity to really choose who and what we want to be we want to choose carefully who we want to invite into our lives. We want to choose carefully the thoughts that we want to hold in our head. We want to choose carefully the ethics, the the, the philosophies that, that, that we want to um, use as a structure 
to build our foundation on, and that's, that's our opportunity. Yes, it is. That's what uh, Stephen Covey, who wrote The Seven Habits and then Eight Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the habits that really impacted me was being proactive as opposed to reactive. If yes. you've got something that you want to do, accomplish, or be, then when events occur to you, you're not reacting to those events. You are saying, hey, does this you know, help me and how do I, how do I, you know, deal with it? And so, therefore, you're 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 dealing more from a core and being proactive and and trying to set stuff up a, as opposed to just running around being a fireman and putting fires out and being reactive. Yeah, and and, and so panel three is a bunch of reactive codes yes. because it comes from the wound. So if right. you look at panel three and you compare it to panel seven, you'll see that panel three is built on faulty structure because yes, yes, because it it falls apart into chaos, and panel eight is really um, a whole and complete person who's able to share and you can see that the people on the ladder are holding hands so they're, yeah, they're actually if you look share. at the, if you look at uh, go on uh, www.drjudywtf.com you can see a copy of the mind map and i didn't realize it but there are actual little peoples <laughs> little Linda peoples little peoples right <laughs> the little peoples right um that is actually on that i mean uh, just quoting another line here from your book it is now time to repair renew and replenish the body mind and soul back to its natural state of being yes. health sustainability and longevity now think about that for a minute folks think about where you are think about what you've gone through it doesn't matter what what you what where you've been and what you've gone through how about a situation where you truly wake up in the morning and you have the natural state of being that we all really want to strive for and being healthy, sustainable, and have longevity, longevity in terms of where we are uh, psychologically. And he- yes. And, 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 and it can happen and it can occur. And one of the, th- the key uh, principles in keeping transformation, because a paradigm shift is transformative in that you're not seeing through the lens of the lie any longer. It's a clear-eyed perception yeah, of self and other and the world at large. And so when we are seeing through cl- cracked lens, it, it, it actually um, sets us up to devolve. Yeah, it's and distorted. Does d- it, it actually sets us, us up to devolve, and when we're sc- seeing through a clear lens, it actually sets us up to evolve. Well, that's, a, that's a concept, devolve. I devolve. Know, a word for you. Okay. Well, I, th- I don't know if I made that up, but uh, it sounds good. It works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> so either we're evolving or we're devolving, and in order to share, in order to keep transformation and to continue to evolve, service is a huge component of keeping and keeping the light if you want to keep the light you have to share the light and it becomes generative so panel eight is now generative it's it's sustainable it's growth producing as opposed to um the death code like a cancer cell is the death code and then the a healthy embryo is the life code so now we've got a, a life code there as opposed to a disconnect and a bunch of psychological viruses running the show, now we've got a connect, and we've got a system of maintaining connection. And, pl- and plug in. Right. And now we've got also the, the negative aspect of this, Walt. We spoke about this today, about people who climb on your ladder. Just remember last time we talked about um, interconnection. We talked about vampiring. We talked about vampiring. Yes, we did. Right. And vampiring is when people pretend to connect with you and they're not really connecting with you. They're actually sucking your blood. You're, they're sucking your emotions and then they leave you very uh, depleted emotionally drained. and drained. And you can tell that you're with the vampire because they're taking and not giving. Right, we talked about givers versus takers. Yes, and, and so now carrying this forth into panel number eight, there are also people who will act as if they're sharing. They will act as if they're being your friend. But However, they're not. They're not. They're not. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Correct. And I want to talk about one particular concept that I learned about this year called affinity fraud. And for any one of you who has been affinity fraud, uh, affinity well, affinity frauded, frauded. thank you, uh, that's a mouthful, uh, it's, it's something like this. Um, you know somebody for many years, they know you, they know your habit patterns, they know your financial situation, they know your vulnerabilities, and they step in right when you're vulnerable 
and they come in to rescue you and boy does it feel good because it feels like somebody has your back and before you know it you're investing in them and you're trusting them and they're siphoning off your money they're siphoning off whatever they can grab a hold of and at the end of that journey they let you down and instead of holding your hand they drop you you think they think you you think they're your friend but when the rubber meets the road they're not around right and this is the ultimate betrayal because right. it's when friends betray friends that that it hurts the most because we're going back to the original wound when mother betrayed infant that was the first betrayal um, and it's a recapitulation of that actually one of the first betrayals if you want to go back 2000 years from now from from here is Judas Iscariot right he was one of the chosen 12 by Jesus for those of you that uh, follow Christianity and was one of the 12 apostles and obviously in any barrel there's usually one bad apple and Judas happened to be the particular one but the point is that as a result of him giving, uh, you know, was basically bribed with 30 pieces of uh, silver. Mm -hmm. um, he showed who needed to know who Jesus truly, truly was and betrayed him. And so therefore, you, it, it's right there. And if you remember, Christ forgave him and loved him. And, and there's the unconditional love, he gave right? Unconditional love. He absolutely did. And Judas couldn't couldn't handle it. And he actually committed suicide. But that's the point is he was on the inside. He was one of them. He'd been around Christ since the beginning. Uh, he was chosen and he, he, you know, betrayed and threw it all away. And we're going to talk more about this. I think we're going to have to continue this. I think so. Um, we've got a lot more to talk about. And mm -hmm. We're going to do, do another double session okay. here on on uh, on panel eight. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a juicy a, panel. It was mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. to cover. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, Judas Iscariot was a classic example. Another one is uh, Marcus Brutus, who betrayed Julius Caesar, right? He was in the inside and realized that Julius was just getting a little bit out of control, and he actually, um, you know, joined in the plot to oust Julius Caesar from power. And thus the famous phrase, et tu, Brute, meaning Absolutely. you too? You too. Mm. That's it. Yep, that's it. Um We've got a few more minutes here, so you want to uh, elaborate on that, or you want to talk about yeah, a, a, absolutely a, a testimonial you you on this regard. Well, yeah, I want to uh, l let me bring in a testimonial here, or rather a case study, a common theme of a case study, because uh, I think the biggest the biggest injury of all is not s not sometimes what happened, but it's the betrayal of the others surrounding the incident. And I see this in my practice all the time. Um, you see this in the case of child abuse. Uh, child gets abused, the memories get jarred, and then uh, the child gets in touch with what happened, and mommy gets told, or oftentimes not told, but sometimes mommy is told what happened, and then mom says, shh, shh, shh. Let's not talk about this. This is going to ruin the family. Yeah, just shovel under the it's carpet. It's going to kill your father if he finds yeah. out that his brother abused your sister, or abused you, or whatever is going on. And then there's this hush, hush, and Absolutely. that is one of the biggest betrayals a human being can. It is the Absolutely. biggest betrayal. So sometimes it's not only the trauma of the molest, the incident. It's a betrayal trauma. Well, the that whole, and in that respect, it, it, I mean, you're talking about a ripple effect. I mean, yes. that ripples multiple families, multiple individuals. Right. Um, and has, um, golly, lifelong damage. Another example of that, and along those lines, is the Catholic Church. Right, you trust so? your, you trust your priest, you trust oh, your father. Of course. Right. Right. And um, they uh, abused uh, boys a lot. Right, and there, there, there is some some people's faith in God, mm -hmm. uh, uh, some you know a, a, an authority figure that pulled this off, and it wasn't your family. Um, that again has tremendously huge ripple effects as well. Yeah, that's another kind of betrayal, Absolutely. isn't it? Huge, it's not affinity huge, huge fraud, betrayal. but it's an affinity thing because you're yes. supposed to trust your priest, you're supposed to trust your rabbi, you're supposed to trust your leaders, you're supposed to trust your teachers. And, and, and you're supposed to trust your parents. So yeah, connect you, the dots, folks. Yeah, and if you can't trust okay? your priest, you can't trust your parents, you can't trust your family, who in the hell can you trust? And when the blueprint is such that you can't trust your parents because that basic trust has been broken, then 
it's really, really hard to trust the world. Really, really hard. Yes. Yes, it is. It certainly is. So I think I think we should uh, shrink it. We're going to do a tune. I think we're going to do Backstabbers. How about that? Let's go for okay, it. Okay, it was a song by the Blue J the OJs from many moons ago. It's entitled uh, The Backstabbers. When you hear this, you'll, you'll remember this, and we'll talk about this. And the other song by the OJs we're going to uh, save for next time. But uh, the, the title song is Backstabbers. So mm -hmm. I'm going to read the lyrics. We're going we're gonna to shrink it here. What they do, they smile in your face all the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers. They smile on your face all the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers. Well, from a panel eight point of view, we're talking about affinity fraud. We're talking about betrayal. Uh, so what do people do? They come on as if. They're your friend, they hold your hand, you rely on them, and so you think to yourself, I'm on safe footing here, um, I'm being contained uh, from a metaphorical point of view, um, I'm, I'm surrounded by unconditional love, mommy's good, mommy's to be trusted, and then, whoops, there's a little knife in my back, they're, they're backstabbers, they smile in your face, and that's the affinity part of it, and then they're not really well-intentioned at all after all. It's funny you talk about a knife in your back. There was a story this week about a guy who walked into McDonald's and wasn't feeling too well, and it literally there was a knife in his back. Ooh. And uh, he passed out and you know had to go to the hospital, but you wow. know, he had it in for a day or so and he just didn't want to go get help. <laughs> uh, um, all you fall uh, back to the song. All you follows who uh, fellows. all you fellows who have someone and you really care, yeah, yeah, then all of you fellows who better beware, somebody's out to get you, lady. A few of your buddies, they sure look shady. Blades are long, clenched tight in their fist, aiming straight at your back, and I don't think they'll miss. So this is very intentional. Yeah, this is it's very straight. In you know, there's a straight an line. It's intense and right. intentional. It's intentional. It's directional. And all you fellows who have someone and you really care, and you know, here it makes a, a reference to a, a jealousy. Somebody's going to get your lady. Uh oh. Well, they're stabbing you in the back, so um, I'm going to have my revenge at them and direct connect <laughs> with the knife in their back. Direct Another connect. form of connection. Connect. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! What they do, they <laughs> smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. The backstabbers. I keep getting all these visits from my friends. Yeah, they're doing to me what they're doing to me. They come to my house again and again and again. Yeah. So they, so are they there to see my woman? I don't even, I don't even be home, but they just keep on a coming. What can I do to get on the right track? I wish they'd take some of those knives off my back. Right, so here's the betrayal. They're coming into his territory and bursting through his boundaries, right? Because apparently this person doesn't know how to set boundaries and he's inviting some pretty negative uh, folks into his life and he keeps getting all these visits so when you hear the visits it's sounding like, oh, maybe it's a nice little visit with a tray of cookies but no <laughs> not quite they're there to you know come into my house to they're they're there to see my woman well they're probably coming with a tray of knives oh or they've already been taken off the tray so and not to cut the cookies with no either. no no, 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 no. So what they do, they smile in your face, smiling faces. Smiling faces sometimes tell lies, those backstabbers. They smile in your face. I don't need low-down, dirty bastards, those backstabbers. Right. So that is backstabbers. Smiling faces. Smiling faces, uh, backstabbers by the OJs. Thank you. So if you have some queries, questions, comments, uh, you want uh, a song shrunk, you can reach us at info at drjudywtf.com. That's info at drjudywtf.com. I'm your host, Walt Lusk. And, of course, this is Dr. Judy, Rosen Dr. Judy Rosenberg with her mind map. And next week we're going to continue our session talking about panel 8 and the healing and encoding. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, enjoy the song. And uh, thanks a lot for listening. And thank you for listening and tuning in. <laughs>